Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Game Art board game review for the game Crazy Cake by B Game Social. The game plays two to six players, it takes roughly 15 to 30 minutes, and is for ages six and up. And in the game Crazy Cake, your objective is to stack and of course toss cake ingredients along with sabotaging your opponent's cakes. You'll be built baking a three-tiered cake in three different sections, attempting to get the most points possible. However, you may sabotage your opponent's cakes by placing other ingredients on theirs, and of course they can do the same to yours. When somebody is finished with their three-tiered cake, that will trigger the end of the game immediately, in which case all points will be tallied for each player, and the player with the most points is the winner. It's a pretty straightforward, simple card game that's all about building crazy cakes, and of course scoring the most points and becoming the best baker of them all. Let's take a look. Okay, ready. Let's get started. To begin the game, simply go ahead and shuffle the crazy cake deck, then deal out one card to the discard pile. Afterwards, for each player playing, give them randomly three cards. And then, based on who is the last player to eat a cake, or maybe even bake a cake, let that player begin the game. Beginning the game is rather simple. You'll simply draw a card from the top of the deck and take it into your hand of three cards, forming a hand of four. Then, choose one of three options. Option one is build your cake. You can place one of your cards down onto the table. Option number two is you can discard one of the cards in your hand that you do not want. And option number three is you're going to be able to sabotage somebody else's cake, provided that you can place it on one of their cakes, by either starting them with one of the cakes, uh, cake cards, or of course, then the next thing is the filling, and finally the topping. And each of the three layered cakes are gonna be in separate areas. So you can formulate three cakes, and then put the, top, the fillings on top of them, and then the toppings on top of those, and in any order you want, as long as you follow the three basic rules, which is going to be first blue, uh, then red, and finally we have yellow. So I've made a vanilla caramel chunky peanut butter cake. And you'll do that three times. And like I said before in the intro, basically whoever is able to finish building all three of the three tiers will end the game. It'll trigger an instant ending and players will calculate the points. Some cake fillings and maybe even the toppings are going to kind of connect with each other in matches to form bonus points. Other cake pieces may include negative points, and some may be higher or lower than others. Additionally, there are going to be sabotage cards. Some of the cards in the deck will say stuff like Food Fight, which will have a unique agenda to them, and of course, maybe even Flip the Table, which is another specific card that does something interesting in the game that changes the, the way of play, as opposed to just simply building the cakes. Regardless though, that's the basic idea of the game. Draw, and then use one of the three actions, and then pass, and the next player will simply draw a card, take one of three three actions and pass and whoever builds their cake first will trigger the end and then calculate points for the winner pretty simple right in crazy cake it's not just important to build your cake the fastest but it's also important to build it the best and so sometimes you might actually want to slow your roll down so that you don't basically finish your cake with a bunch of negatives while your opponent might have less cards in play and have more points an example would be this one here which over here i have a negative three four and a five it's really, really damaging, negative 12 points, which will actually negate almost all of this cake, which is 13, giving me only one point. And this one over here is then going to only generate me six, or five, I should say, only giving me a total of six points for all of this. Whereas this player over here has gotten mostly negative, or mostly positives, giving me 19 points here. And thusly, this single layer here is worth more than the other player's cake completely. So you need to be careful of how many pieces you're building and when you're building them and how you're building them, uh, avoid sabotages, and use your cards to your advantage to get rid of pieces that you don't want on your cake. Another interesting little point to the game is you're able to draw cards from the discard pile as opposed to the top of the deck. Do you see a filling or a cake or a topping that you might want? You can select from there as opposed to taking from the randomness of the deck, but that really depends on what you need. If you're looking to finish the game, for instance, and you're missing that final yellow uh, topping, then you're probably going to want to draw from the deck here as opposed to take the cake piece, which won't be good for you anyways, it's a negative seven. But maybe you want to use that to give to somebody else, provided they have a space for it, like this player over here. So you could probably take that on your next turn, you can place that down there, which is also very useful. Um, then of course you have these cards here, there's three different colored cards, you have blue, you have yellow, and then of course you have red. And they do different things, like food fight. Each baker steals an ingredient from the top of an opponent's completed or incomplete tier to stack onto their own cake. 
pretty useful. Uh, discard one complete or incomplete tier of any baker's cake, including your own. So you can kind of use it to help you or to be against you. And then of course, switcheroo. Switch one tier from your cake with one tier from another baker's cake. Cake tiers do not have to be completed to be switched. So there's a lot of these specific action cards in the game that will allow you kind of manipulate the cakes and the tiers on the board, thusly kind of switching around negative points. Because for instance here, you might not want these two because they're going to provide you with negative points. So being able to switch one of these guys with one of these guys, which is a higher value, is going to score you additional points and make your opponent receive negative points at the end of the game. Basically, choosing not only pushing yourself to get those tiers and to get the game over with, um, with all the needed pieces that you can possibly get with as many points as you can get is important, but having the right pieces is drastically important in this game. It's a very straightforward, simple card playing game, which you're just going you know, to have this little take that mechanism. You've got a little bit of a tableau layer management system, which you're trying to create your cake. And then, of course, the added fun of having a bunch of unique little cake pieces that you may or may not want to build. Uh, for instance, would you want a carrot caviar sauerkraut cake? I, it doesn't sound really good to me, but the caviar card's worth 10 points, so I'd probably play it anyway. Or maybe a zest of lemon maple syrup mocha cake. Uh, that one actually sounds possible. And then, of course, a broccoli bubblegum vanilla cake. I don't, I don't know about that one either. Regardless, that's kind of the point of the game. It's about making crazy, fun, fanciful cakes uh, that you probably wouldn't see in real life anyway. And of course, trying to score as many points as possible. It's one of those games where you finish rather quickly and you can jump right back in. It plays all the way up to six players and I strongly urge you to play at least three players or more. So it has that kind of variety of where you can take from and give to. And it has just a little bit more social interaction. I've always liked games like these to have more players. More players, better. Of course, all the artwork is super cute and fun. I like the different types of toppings and fillings and cakes that you can kind of mash together and put together. It is rather simplistic. It's not a game for heavy gamers. It's not even a game really for super medium for medium gamers. It's a very light game. It's a filler game. It's something you can play in between games or if you have kids or families or if you know somebody with a bunch of kids, Crazy Cake would be something they should take a look at. Cards are high quality. Box works as well. Rules are very, very simple and easy to understand and it's pretty, pretty straightforward type of a game. It's one of those things where I can say, you know, most people will see this game and know if it's something for them or not. This is a game I'd probably bring out when I have cousins over, my grandparents would be into this type of game, or me and whenever I get some kids, this is something I would play. I mean, my wife would enjoy it as well, but it's not something that we're going to see play as much here because she likes more of a thicker, like super strategy type of a game, those like puzzly type of games. Um, but it's one of those games where I could easily see filling a night with some light fillers. And of course, a bunch of kids is going to work as well. A Crazy Cake will be on Kickstarter, and if you're interested, there will be a link in the description below for you to go ahead and take a look at the game on Kickstarter. And if you'd like to back it, go ahead and do so. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Crazy Cake. Like I said before, link down below in the description. Go ahead and click it if you're interested. And of course, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button if you'd like to see more videos just like this one. We also have a live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST where we play games live on Facebook every Sunday. Check it out. And of course, on Monday, if you don't have time to check it out there, you can come on YouTube here and we do have a fully edited version of the live stream for you guys to watch, just like games like these. You'll see all kinds of games that we review here. You can also check out the website, unfilteredgamer.com. We do blog posts, we do giveaways, we do reviews on there. Usually they're reviews for games that I actually haven't reviewed here on YouTube, so it's a nice kind of mix between reading those or watching these, whatever you prefer. Thank you guys so much, Patreon members, even those guys giving me a buck. It really, really helps us with our live streams and helps with shipping out games and giveaways so I really really appreciate it all you guys out there and of course as always I look forward to building the craziest cake with you next time <laughs>